So Thomas, this is this is the O shape, um, which was which I designed back in nineteen gosh nineteen seventy six seventy seven. Uh, the year I was born. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you're as old as that, really. Um, okay. <laughs> so this was the first the first um, uh, it wasn't the first shape, but it was the first shape I was happy with uh, after I started building guitars. Um, it's larger body, it's a little bit larger than a dreadnought. Um, I saw uh, your number 19. Number 19 would Is have been a different shape. It yeah. would have been a different yes, shape? Yes, it would, yeah. Okay. Slightly longer okay. and slightly smaller, width-wise. Well, I, was, I, I was amazed when I saw number 19 how similar the guitar was yeah. to what you built today. Yeah, it's similar but not but not the same. When I, when I yeah. in 1976, when I got to this, to this uh, body shape, I, I felt that I was happy with the shape for the first time. I suppose really the way I designed shapes in those days was, you know, just with a pencil and drawing and then looking at it and drawing again and then fixing it slightly and then making, making the three-dimensional guitar and then looking at it. And always I was tw tweaking things and changing things. And so finally I arrived at this shape uh, back then. And of course, um, the sound was, because the sound box is slightly bigger than our other ones, um, the sound has this, um, this kind of uh, width. It doesn't have a tight focus. It has a real interwoven sound, you know, that sort of percolates out there rather than hitting you and hitting you in, in the stomach. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very subtle kind of sound. Excellent for <clears throat> for finger picking, um, especially uh, some of the more Celtic music, um, where uh, where the finger picking is, uh, the the rhythms are kind of interwoven with the yeah. with the melody so often, and that's why it's so good for that kind of music because the sound is wider and it's more interwoven. Um, so you'll be able to demonstrate that, of course. Uh, much. And you've got a chin to what? What is this one chin to? This is dad. dad this is dad. God. Now I think it's ready for you to for you for, for you to demonstrate. So if you if you could play something um, melodic for a moment no, I don't and so yeah, you don't do melodic. No, I know you but don't. But I'll do it for you. Don't I? <laughs> um. So you see the 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 thing. One of the things about the voicing of the of the O sound box is the fact that um, because the sound box is bigger, naturally it tends to accent the ex accent the bass slightly. And sometimes, if you're not careful with with the design, the bass can a uh, bass and lower mids can overpower the treble. But I wanted to make sure with this that the trebles remain fat and full so if you play some of the higher notes you know yeah, that was too hard. So the balance, um, what I did with the sound box geometry and, um, and also with the voicing of the bracing was to try and accentuate the trebles because the bass almost takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but you still, like every guitar top is, like the bracing is the same but it's, it's basically carved individually to every top just about. Well the bracing is, well, the bracing is not the same for every model. I mean, the, the position of it is almost the same, but not quite. But also the size of the bracing um, is, 
uh, is different from the O model to the F model and yep. to the S model. Um, and of course, the it's very important when you're talking about bracing to make sure that the design kind of works together like that and mm -hmm. doesn't and doesn't fight. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I change the depth, the sound box depth. Um, then I, I would probably have to change the way the bracing was voiced. Otherwise, we could end up with some, um, some parts of the design fighting with the others and then the guitar wouldn't work quite as well as it does at the moment. Because this design came way back in 1976, um, a lot of the players who were coming to me back then were um, Celtic music players, you know, from Brittany and from Ireland, of course. And, um, you know, they really, uh, people like Dan, Dan O'Brien, um, uh, Pierre, of course, and many other Celtic players. And therefore, I suppose without me really realizing it, I was trying to create a guitar which would work yeah. for for Celtic music. Of course, it works for other music as well, but that would be maybe its most comfortable yeah. setting, you know. See, it wasn't until later on that I started to, to meet other players, you know, from different genres and um, therefore I started to think about how I might be able to design a guitar to, to work better, you know, for flat picking, for example, and so on. So if I, I could move on to the, um, if I could take that guitar out of your hands, Thomas, just for a moment. Uh, cold I, know, I know you find it hard to let it go, but... <laughs> Around about 1982, maybe 83, I'd have to, um, I, I guess there were some players who were um, saying to me about the American design of guitar and asking me if, um, you know, if I, if I could do a dreadnought and I felt a little bit um, like I really wanted to do my own design. So, I realized I would have to make a guitar, or design a guitar, which was the same size um, as a dreadnought rather than the jumbo, the jumbo size. I know it doesn't look the same size, okay. but actually it is the same size. The F model is the same size at the lower bout uh, in terms of the width, the same way as a dreadnought is. Of course, it's a little bit narrower at the waist. Okay. It has a waist, whereas a dreadnought is, it does not really. So, <laughs> um, so I was really trying to design a guitar which was uh, optimized for flat picking, and that's why it's called the F. But of course, what I've found out is over the years that, in fact, players who don't who never flat pick mm -hmm. sometimes choose this model. So it works well for flat picking. You can dig in more. You can be more aggressive. You can use a heavier pick, and the, the sound is more focused. So it's in it's it's uh, it's not quite as wide as the as the old model. The sound tends to sort of hit you more uh -huh. if you're listening to it. As a player, of course, it's a bit more compact, 
uh, everything is slightly more disciplined than with the than with the yeah. O. Um, the, the sound is more disciplined. It's more easy to control. So. See, it's, it's slightly more compact. It also has the, you have the feeling it's slightly louder, even though it isn't. But it's because of the focus. Yeah, I always felt that the F projected a little farther. Yeah, it does. Now. It does. Yeah, uh, that's right. It projects. It's a bit like the difference between a subwoofer <laughs> and a, you know, and a, a, a nice uh, middle, middle range, mid range speaker. Yeah. You know, the mid-range speaker is smaller. Um, and then, of course, you have at the other end, you have a tweeter. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want a, a comparison, you know, the O model would be, okay, it's not a subwoofer because it's more like a full-range speaker. <laughs> and then you have the, you have the, um, uh, the F model, which is more like a mid-range speaker. Mm -hmm. But it still, it still has to be full-range as well. It still has to be able to, to get out the basses and get out the trebles the way you want it to. So I didn't design the bracing exactly the same as with the O, and I didn't have the soundbox geometry quite the same either. But it, you're right, it does have this feeling, you have this feeling it projects slightly better. And of course, when you put an open tuning like this, like Dadgad, it still reverberates and still has some of that interwoven quality that the O has, so. Of bass as well, so I'm not going to try and play it. I'd be much better. Oh, I'd be much better if you tune. did. <laughs> Give us a tune. A tune. <laughs> no, I'll just. Please I'll just sit now. back. bass string harder with yeah. the... That's why it'll sometimes rattle when I play it, you know, because I... Because you're used to a 58 or a 60, you yeah. know. Rosewood cedar combination in the F in the F model. So it has slightly more. Um, it, it's it's more disciplined. It's it's got more projection. It hasn't got quite this sort of finesse, if you like, and subtlety of the O model. Bigger one. Take that off you before you get to you get the leg it too much. You have to surgically remove it, George. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move on and let's try move on to the last design, which was the S. And in the in the speaker analogy, this would be tweeter. This would be a, a well tweeter. a tweeter, except of course it has to be full range yet again. <laughs> but the the accent of course, is more towards the treble. So when I, uh, it was actually Nick Webb from Acoustic Alchemy who came to me in 1992 
and he asked me if I would design a small guitar um, for him and uh, so I did and I knew that because it was a small sound box that um, it would naturally bring out the trebles more but the issue would be how to get enough bass so I changed the, the sound box geometry I relaxed the whole guitar more in the um, in the structure so that it would uh, be more it would breathe more easily and it would tend to help the bass bass response you loosened up the guitar a little bit to make sure that it has a bit more bass bass response yeah so that kind of sounds a little bit like classical guitar and i have yeah. yet to play one of your famed classical guitars yeah. uh, uh, you have there's only a couple dozen in existence, huh? Oh, many more than that. Oh, yeah, okay. there's, there's maybe well, 150 or so. Yeah. Where's mine? Oh. Well, I couldn't play it anyway. But, um, my question is, did, did your classical playing influence the design on this? At classical guitar building, did it influence your design on this? Or did this get you into classical? Well, actually, the more? classical... Actually, I, I started building classicals in earnest in 1987. And this design uh, I did in 1992, so I guess the the work that I had already done on classical guitars start was 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 definitely influencing my yeah. thinking when I came to this to design the S model. You know, I went to uh, Ticino in southern Switzerland in 1987 and stayed in Werner's house, and I designed and built three classical guitars one of my own design, one of a sort of hybrid, mm -hmm. and one of a more traditional design. And uh, from that we chose one of those designs uh, as being the one which held the most promise. And my thinking developed on classical guitars over the next few years, and then 1992 I designed this. So yes, in fact, <coughs> the, the need in a classical guitar to allow that guitar to respond very quickly and very easily. Everything has to be very relaxed mm -hmm. in a classical guitar because the strings themselves don't have enough tension and power yeah. to, to make the guitar sing unless the guitar is really relaxed. Yeah. So with this, that was rather the same yeah. idea. Was it Nick Webb? Nick Webb from Acoustic Alchemy yeah. came to me and asked me to build Class uh, the uh, steel string small body. small body, and so I did. I finished the first one in about 1992, and when I first strung it up, I remember in my living room, and I uh, started to play it, and I I almost cried, and I don't cry. I'm not a yeah. crying kind of person, but uh, I almost cried because the sound was so um, <coughs> subtle, so sensitive, um, and. It felt like the guitar almost was playing itself, which it needs to when, when you're talking about me playing it. Yeah. <laughs> so so you the, the play more than you let on. Mm, you actually know three chords. I know, yeah, one. maybe three and a half. But the, the thing is that, that uh, with this, as I said before, the key thing for me was trying to make the bass come out because so many small guitars sound boxy. And I did. I really wanted to avoid that, you know, as mm. much as possible. So for a small guitar, mm. you know, it has good. Of course, it has good sustain, but it also has good bass. Yeah. Well, for a small guitar, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is down to the geometry, mostly the geometry of the guitar. So. I'm going to hand it over to you to try a few things. Try a few things. I just touched it the wrong way. 
the scale length is a little shorter, right? Slightly shorter, 630. There's something, there's something really um, en endearing about the tone, you know. I guess that's what I felt right at the beginning. What I noticed before when I was playing this one is uh, I played exactly that pseudo flat picking. It's not right for that. Uh, this guitar can be so. Loud, actually. Oh yeah, that's right. And yeah. I, I played it out there, and I yeah. Poked, uh, that's because I that's because the, that's well. because the focus is even smaller. Even uh, I heard a good analogy for that. Somebody said uh, there's a bit like a water hose. If you have the water hose on, mm. it'll go. There's a lot of it, and it'll go a certain certain distance. If you squeeze a little, it'll go farther. Go farther, yeah. And then if you squeeze it really shy, uh, it's, 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 pro it's projection. Time. It's projection, yeah. When you're up close with this guitar, it sounds incredibly loud, you know. Of course, it's important when you're when you're designing a guitar, you know, to to decide how much you want the back to move. Um, there is a temptation, you know, to make the back and sides very immovable and just allow the soundboard to, to, to move and breathe. But the problem with that is that you then begin to lose a bit of tone and, um, you know, after all, making music is about, is about partly about getting the tone that you want from a guitar. It's not just all about volume or uh, it, it, it's talking about tone character is so important, you know. So. Of course, this is uh, the S model is great for melody. So if you're playing um, just pure, simple melody notes, you know it's perfect for that because it's so articulated and so defined. Um, and okay, let's see if this goes on this because it's getting. Some. Yeah. Of course, the 630 scale is catching you out there because you used the 650, but it's it's. Uh, it's Yeah, pretty walnut. Yeah, walnut works very well with cedar because um, um, you know walnut gives a very clear um, crystalline kind of tone, but the cedar warms it up. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons. I've seen my signature guitar as a back on the nest. Your cedar. <laughs> <laughs> your, walnut your, spruce. Uh, walnut spruce. Yeah, but that's because you dig in. You like mm -hmm. to dig in, and if you're gonna if you're gonna dig in like and play hard, then you're probably better with spruce, yeah. otherwise you'll dig extra holes in the cedar, you know. <laughs> extra sound holes. Feels like it's gonna be there a minute later. You know, it's just still going. Well, cup of tea and cup no, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks, George.